Hey, Pretty Girl Club. Welcome back to another episode of Pretty Girl Problems. Um, if you're new to this YouTube channel, this channel is created for multiracial black women. So whether you are multi-generationally mixed, uh, you're biracial, maybe you're triracial, quadracial, whatever you want to call it, that's who this channel is for, as well as monoracial black women who look mixed. So they share our phenotypes. So women who have maybe a lighter skin tone, maybe you have light eyes, maybe you have looser hair patterns, but you just didn't take the DNA test and you can't pinpoint any mixture in your DNA. Um, that's who this channel is for. I also talk about decentering men on this channel because it's impossible to talk about beauty and to talk about the jealousy that we experience without talking about men because most of the women who use jealousy against us, those women are often male centered. And so I personally believe that once you go on a decentering men journey, most of your insecurities about your physical appearance will go away. But anyway, this episode is going to be about when your own beauty makes you feel like a fraud. So that's the best way I can think of to describe it. Um, I've noticed that when you are born a certain way, like let's say you're born pretty, People want to shame you for wearing makeup because they feel like, oh, well, you're already pretty. You don't need makeup. You already have long hair. You don't need to wear extensions. You already have a nice body. You don't need to lose any more weight. Oh my God, how dare you try to get a six pack? You're already skinny. You don't need a six pack. And I've noticed that people, they don't want you to modify your body in any way. They don't want you to have any beauty enhancements. They don't want you to switch up your beauty. And the way that they go about forcing you to not change your beauty is by trying to make you feel like you're a fraud. I've noticed that a lot of men over in the red pill space will do this. They'll be like, oh, well, she's not as pretty without makeup. So they're trying to make it like the makeup is pretty and not you. But in reality, I actually disagree because I feel like if you look pretty with makeup on, well, that means you already had a pretty face because all makeup is is just colors and creams and powders that you are putting on the face that you already had. Same thing goes with hair extensions. Oh, well, you're only pretty because you're wearing hair extensions. Well, obviously the hair extensions look good and frame my face well. You know, the color of the hair extensions looks good against my skin tone or against my eye color. Same thing goes with color contacts. People are like, oh, well, that looks fake and you're trying to be white. You're trying to be X, Y, Z. And it's like, those are still your actual eyes. That's still your eye shape, your eyeball. So clearly that color within the contact goes well with your skin tone, goes well with maybe your facial features. Maybe they look like you could have been born that way. But I've noticed that people try to shame you by making you feel insecure. They want you to feel like a fraud. And I actually came across this um, post on Reddit where this girl says she has an eye color insecurity. She said, I am really insecure about the fact that I wear colored contacts. I wear steel blue ones and they have prescriptions so I don't need to wear glasses, but I feel like a fraud and I'm afraid if people find out, they will judge me. I know I shouldn't care, but I can't help but feel insecure. It's almost like being insecure about a cosmetic surgery. I want to use that analogy because people definitely feel better about themselves, but there's this whole stigma against it because you don't naturally look like that. I do look better with those contacts, but I'm just feeling like a fraud. So this actually plays directly into what I talk about on this channel. You have the right to enjoy your own beauty in whatever way you see fit. So if you want to wear different contacts, that's your business. If you want to wear extensions, that's your business. And I've noticed that anytime a person is embarrassed, like, oh, if somebody finds out that this thing about me is fake, they're going to judge me. But my response to that is, if somebody was only friends with me because they thought that my extensions were my real hair, then they were never my friend. If a guy is only talking to me because he thought that my blue contacts were my real eye color, then that's not a guy that I want anyway. I wouldn't want people in my life who are only around me because of my eye color. They're only around me because of my hair texture. They only hang out with me because of my boob size. Those things are all um, very small in the grand scheme of things. And so I really think that there is no need to be ashamed of how you choose to enjoy your beauty. So are people going to stereotype you? Yes, they are. Are people going to say, oh, well, she's wearing contacts because maybe she doesn't like brown eyes. Maybe she thinks blue eyes look better. Maybe she wants to be white. Yes, people might be thinking that in their minds, but people are going to think negative things about you either way. People are going to talk shit about you either way. They're going to talk shit whether you're super skinny, whether you're super thick, whether you're tall, short, have blonde hair, have black hair. People are always going to have something to say. And so my thing is, am I going to allow 
other people's thoughts to control my behavior? Because if so, then that means I'm not really living authentically anyway. So it's like, am I going to punish myself from experiencing different kinds of beauty because other people put themselves in a box or they, you know, they don't let themselves wear hair extensions. So now I can never try hair extensions. And I'm only speaking from experience here, by the way, I talk all the time about uh, my background. I came from a conservative type of background. My father is a minister and he also, he sometimes has more of the red pill types of talking points. And so my dad growing up, he was very against like, uh, hair extensions and weaves and like relaxers. And by the way, my dad is an unambiguous monoracial dark skinned black man. Um, so he was always against those things because he associated it with being fake or it's like, Oh, you must not be as pretty without those things. And it's like, even if I am not as pretty without those things, am I supposed to feel bad about that? Am I only allowed to have confidence if I feel pretty with no makeup on, with no wigs and weave? No, you don't have to be naturally pretty in order to be confident. Confidence is not reserved for people who are naturally a 10 out of 10 or they just woke up looking perfect, their body looks perfect 24 seven. Those are not the only people who are allowed to be confident. You are allowed to be confident whether your hair is real, whether it's fake, whether your eye color is real or fake, whether your skin tone is real or fake, whether your teeth are natural or you had Invisalign or braces or veneers, you are allowed to be confident either way. And I think that people play into insecurities when they do not tell the truth about certain things. Like if they lie and say, oh no, I didn't get any uh, plastic surgeries, then yes, they are um, going to have more insecurities because of cognitive dissonance. You guys hear me talk a lot on this channel about the negative effects of cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when you say one thing, but behind closed doors, you are something different. So if I say my blue contacts are real, but behind closed doors, I know that they're fake, that is cognitive dissonance. And that is going to cause me to be more insecure, not about the fact that I'm wearing the contacts, but the fact that I lied about wearing the contacts, because now I have to deal with, you know, why did I lie? Why do I feel the need to impress people with my eye color? Why do I feel the need to impress people by lying about my hair texture? Why do I need to impress people by lying about the fact that I went to go get a tan and that I wasn't naturally born with this bronze skin tone. So the cognitive dissonance that you experience from lying is much worse than people scrutinizing you when you're confident in your beauty enhancements. So the way that I learned to overcome things like that and to overcome that feeling of being a fraud was I would start off by experimenting with something for one week. So I've talked on previous episodes about how I used to have a complex about red lipstick. And this is because when I was growing up, I was not allowed to wear like red nail polish, red lipstick for, for whatever reason, um, because of my kind of Baptist influence, the color red was associated with like being a whore and stuff. And then wearing red lipstick was associated with kind of being like this video vixen, like you're a siren, you're trying to seduce people and stuff. So you're trying too hard. And so I didn't realize that deep down inside I had internalized those views. And so I remember even when I was in college, when I would see other pretty girls who had the same phenotype as me, maybe they had the same skin tone as me, same hair texture as me, but they would wear red lipstick. I used to think in my mind, oh, well, they have to try harder in order to be pretty. So they must not be as pretty, but that's actually projection. What I was really experiencing was jealousy. I was jealous of the attention that they got with the red lipstick. I was jealous of the fact that their red lipstick matched their shoes, which matched their purse, which made them look very expensive and classy and pretty. So I was actually suppressing my own desires. You guys have heard me talk about how jealousy actually just reveals what your desires are. So if you are jealous of somebody who has blue eyes or somebody who has, maybe you are, maybe you have a tan skin tone and dark eyes and you think that a tan skin tone with blue eyes looks very pretty. And maybe you've always wanted to see what you look like with those eyes. And maybe you get triggered when you see other women who look like you, except they have blue eyes. The way that you can overcome that is by admitting to yourself, I want to see what I look like if I had blue eyes. I just want to see what I would look like. It doesn't mean that I want to get a surgery or whatever. I'm not against surgeries, but it's like if all you're doing is you just want to experiment or you want to change your look, or even if you do want to get a surgery, it's your body and you have the right to embrace your beauty or not. You can decide for yourself. Hey, you know what? 
um, even though I'm still pretty, I don't really like being 200 pounds. I don't, re I don't really like being 190, 185. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to like 120 because I just feel like I would be more confident and that's okay. Everybody has a different beauty standard. I believe that no two people have the same beauty standard, but feeling like a fraud within your own beauty or feeling like a fraud because you're wearing certain beauty enhancements, I actually think that's a very common thing because I have experienced that with red lipstick in particular. Um, I remember I did not wear red lipstick because I saw it as a way to make myself stand out or a way to make myself feel better by not wearing the red lipstick. I thought that, hey, it makes me prettier if I do not wear makeup because I'm proving to the whole world that like I think I'm pretty without makeup. But then I realized, why do I have to prove to the whole world that I think I'm pretty without makeup, especially if deep down inside, I want to try the red lipstick and I think red looks fantastic on me and I want to try the burgundy lipstick and the brown lipstick to go with the fall season and stuff. So I've noticed that a lot of times when people try to make you feel like you're a fraud, it's because they are threatened by the fact that you have the courage and the boldness to wear the red lipstick. They are threatened by the fact that you have the courage to be able to handle that kind of attention that you get from wearing the red lipstick, from having the BBL, from having the boob job, or from getting the liposuction. They do not have the courage to handle the attention or the scrutiny that could come with having colored contacts or having a plastic surgery. And so because they can't handle scrutiny, they want to scrutinize you because they want you to feel the same insecurity that they feel. They want you to feel like a fraud because deep down inside, they would feel like a fraud if they did the same thing. But guess what? Other people's insecurities are not your problem. And so what I had to realize as I was growing up was that I was actually internalizing the insecurities of men because like men in the church, they used to make talking points like, oh, if she wears makeup, she's just trying to get attention. If she wears high heels, she's trying to get attention from men. If she wears a cute dress that shows off her body, she's only trying to get attention from men. And so everything I was doing was actually male-centered because I was doing everything in my power to prove to men that I was not trying to get attention from men. So for the people that may have been questioning this girl about her eye color, the question that I have is, why do you wear your eye color? Like, why do you wear your natural eye color only? Why don't you switch it up? Why don't you wear the red lipstick? Why don't you get liposuction if you're 500 pounds? Why don't you work out or try tanning or try like doing these different things to make your look stand out? Who told you that your beauty has to have limits? Who told you that your beauty can only be natural and that if your beauty is not natural, it's somehow invalidated? This is what I don't like when people try to make you feel like a fraud. It's because they're trying to invalidate your beauty. That's where I have the problem. The only reason that they call out Kim Kardashian or Kylie Jenner and all these people is because they see them gaining pr pretty privilege. They see them gaining popularity and stuff and, you know, having surgeries and being praised as being beautiful after they've had these plastic surgeries and they are mad about it. So they want to shame them. They want them to feel insecure. But that's what I don't like because you're trying to invalidate somebody else's beauty. Why are you trying to invalidate them? Why are you trying to make them feel ugly? If anything, that just shows your own insecurities about your own looks because only an insecure woman wants somebody else to feel ugly about their dark brown eyes. Only an insecure person wants someone else to feel ugly in their natural hair texture or feeling ugly without makeup. The only time I've ever heard somebody call out beauty enhancements in a negative way is if they are trying to humble them. That's it. That's the only reason that people have ever called out beauty enhancements. Or if somebody's asking you, hey, is that your real hair? I've noticed there are only a couple of reasons. Either they are trying to humble you or they want to copy you. So they admire how you look and they want to copy you. Or if they are insecure themselves, they are trying to decide how high of a pedestal to put you on because maybe they pedestalize people with longer hair. Maybe they pedestalize people with blue eyes or they pedestalize something. So they want to know if yours is real or fake. But for the people who pedestalize things that happen to be your beauty enhancements, who cares if they want, if they think somebody with naturally long curly hair down to their thighs looks better than me, then that's fine. Go over there and go give them that pretty privilege because guess what? There's plenty of pretty privilege to go around. There is plenty of confidence to go around. 
confidence is not something that has to be lacking. Like I've, I've noticed that a lot of people, they want you to feel like a fraud within your own body because they don't want you to have confidence. They don't want you to be able to just put on some clip in extensions and then walk out like you're the baddest bitch in the room. They don't want you to be able to just put on some red lipstick and feel like you are a video vixen. They don't want you to be able to put on some blue contacts and feel like you just look really cute and really pretty. They don't like that. They don't like that you can feel confident with something as simple as some Botox or a little bit of lipo or working out or doing your hair in curls. I've, I've seen people um, gaslight women with straighter hair and I've seen some of those women who have straight hair, they will do things to make their hair more curly, almost like how a mixed woman's natural curls will be. And I've seen people hating on those women saying, well, your hair's not even naturally curly. Your hair is naturally straight. You just, you put flexi rods in it. You wet your hair and then put it in pin curls so that you can get that 1950s pin curl look. Your hair isn't naturally like that. And it's like, so what? I still look good and I still feel confident because whenever I am doing something for my beauty. When I put my makeup on or when I put on some hair extensions, the reason I am doing that is because I believe that those things look beautiful on me. I believe that I look very good with hair extensions. I look good with a tan or without a tan. I feel like I look good when I do those things. So that's the reason that people do it. That's the reason that people enhance their beauty. That's It's literally self-explanatory. They feel like those things enhance them. Or maybe they want to play around with um, how they are perceived, because I've done that before as well. Um, I have a video on this channel about how I switched my hair extensions dozens of times so that I could see how society would react to me. So I've noticed that for a lot of mixed race women or women who look kind of ambiguous, you like to play with your ambiguity and you have every right to play with your ambiguity. You have every right to play around with your beauty and decide for yourself, because it's your body. You get to decide, do I like my skin like when I first wake up in the morning with no makeup, or do I like how my skin looks when it is covered up with foundation? And there is no, one is not better than the other. Do I like how my eyes look with no contacts on, or do I like how my eyes look when I put on these blue contacts or these purple cosplay contacts or you know no contacts at all? Do I like how it looks? Why am I putting on these hair extensions? Why am I putting on these contacts? Because I have noticed that yes, some people may do things because they hate themselves, but even if somebody hates themselves, why is it my business and my duty to go up to a person and randomly call out that they hate themselves? Like I don't go on to black women's channels where they say, I hate my 4C hair. I don't comment on their channels and say, you hate yourself. Because why would I kick someone while they're down? Why would I shame someone for how they feel about themselves? If they hate their 4C hair, then that's their business. That's between them and their own hair texture, and they get to decide what to do about it. Do they want to slick it down or learn how to style it? Maybe if they learn how to grow it out, would they not hate it? Maybe if they got rid of it, would they not hate it? If they shave their head? I don't care what other women do in order to solve their insecurities, and I also don't see a need to go and call out somebody else's flaws. Because why do I need to do that? I feel like confident women, they don't have to go out of their way to try to call out everybody in sight. They don't have to go out of their way to ask people in the grocery store, is your hair real? Are your eyes real? Is this real? Is that real? It's like, no, most of the time, if people are asking if something is real, for me personally, if I'm wearing a beauty enhancement, I tell people um, because I just, I guess I'm just like that personality wise. Like, I don't care if somebody asks me, are you wearing a wig or like, are you wearing contacts? Because I've worn contacts before, like uh, the cosplay contacts and stuff like that. So whenever I change up my looks, I'll talk about me wearing cosplay contacts. I literally have contacts that are purple. So that is obviously going to look fake. But I don't care if I look fake because my intention is not to look real and to look like I woke up like this. My intention is to look cute. That's it. My intention is simply to look cute. It's to be carefree. It's to express my creativity. I like to express my mood via my fashion. So fashion for me includes my whole body. I like to view my whole body as a canvas, which means that I can change it up. I can change the colors on my body. I can change the colors that I wear on my face or on my eyes or on my head. And I can repaint myself or redecorate myself however I see fit. But there are other people who don't think like that and that's okay. One's not better than the other. Some people believe, hey, I'm already like perfect as I am, or I'm like a masterpiece as I am. 
So I'm not going to wear any makeup at all. I'm not going to do my hair at all. I'm just going to grow it into free form locks or I'm going to grow it, you know, how it naturally grows from my head. I'm not going to style it. And that's okay. One's not better than the other, but I don't think that people should shame you if you fit into a different beauty category than them. Because I feel like when it comes to embracing your pretty privilege, I do believe that there are so many different types of pretty privilege. There is the natural beauty pretty privilege. So those are kind of the bohemian girls. You know, I think of women who, like the black women who grow their hair into those freeform locks, kind of like Lauren Hill and stuff, and they just embrace it how it is. So there are women who have that type of beauty. There are women who do have the type of beauty as like the Kardashians. They like kind of the glam and they're willing to pay money. They're willing to pay thousands of dollars so they can get their boobs done or get the lipo and stuff so there's that type of pretty privilege and then there are so many other different types so just because you chose to have a different type of pretty privilege it doesn't mean that you are somehow less than somebody else and I've noticed that the only people who try to make you feel less than those are people who don't have good intentions for you anyway and anybody who chose to be friends with you because your eyes were blue or because you know you wore extensions and stuff those people are not genuine anyway so they can kick rocks I know that for me, the most powerful way that I show my confidence is actually when I walk into work with a different wig on. Like seriously, I remember there was this one girl at my job, I told the story about her, she was trying to gaslight me or make me feel ashamed because my hair, my hair is naturally curly. She tried to say that like one of my curls was not curling up in the same way as another curl, but I don't care because it's my hair. And then I remember um, as a form of revenge, yes, I'm petty, but as my form of revenge, I started wearing my hair in different hairstyles every single day because I'm not going to allow people to try to police what hairstyles I can and can't wear or how I should and shouldn't style my hair. You can't tell me what eye color I'm allowed to have or not allowed to have. Like if you wear colored contacts, nobody can tell you you're not allowed to wear blue contacts because you have brown eyes. You're banned from wearing that. No, you can walk into any local gas station beauty supply and they have all kinds of contacts. You have orange, yellow, green, red, black. They have like the scary ones at Party City. So anybody can do what they want with their bodies. But one of my ways that I like to flex my confidence is, yes, I actually like to switch up my wigs and switch up my face, like switch my makeup and stuff so that I look totally different. I actually love doing that. And a part of the reason why people get mad is because they know they don't have the confidence to do what you're doing. Like I remember the lady at my job, the same one who made fun of my natural hair for like not blending in or not looking uh, perfect with my extensions. That same woman, she had an obsession with everything about her looking natural. And I mean, if you want everything about you to look natural, that's fine. But I, for me personally, I've noticed that I, I like unnatural beauty. I've noticed that that is what I like right now. I've spent my whole life and my whole background as a Christian, I spent all of that time being natural. And so now I want to enjoy fake nails, fake hair, red lipstick, makeup, whatever I want. So I don't care if it looks natural or not. Who do I need to look natural for? Like, that's my question that I ask myself. Who do I need to look natural for? My parents already know what I naturally look like. If I have a boyfriend, he already knows what I naturally look like. If I have siblings and stuff, they already know what I naturally look like. So who do I owe my natural face or natural beauty to? Like, seriously, if I walk into work with red lipstick on, are they going to say, oh, sorry, those aren't your natural lips. Your lips are not naturally red and perfect like that. So you can't come into this job. You're fired. Are they going to say, oh, sorry, your eyes, they're not naturally blue. They're brown. So now I look down on you for having brown eyes. Like really? Anyone who does that is an ignorant person that I wouldn't want in my life anyway. But on this channel, because we are the pretty girl club, and because no one discusses the nuances that happen when it comes to beauty, um, I know that for me, that was one of my biggest insecurities, was feeling like a fraud in my own body, feeling like a fraud because of my own beauty, or feeling like, you know, let's say I wore a push-up bra or something. I, I used to feel that same feeling, like, oh, you're being a fraud because you're trying to really push up your boobs extra high. You're just trying to draw attention to yourself. And also, what's wrong with drawing attention to yourself? What's wrong with receiving positive attention? What is wrong with receiving compliments? As long as you're not actively hurting yourself or others, I see nothing wrong with receiving attention. If I'm not actively hurting myself or actively hurting others, there's nothing wrong with gaining positive attention. The only people that don't want you to have those beauty enhancements are people who don't want you to receive positive attention because of those beauty enhancements. 
So all of those people that try to call out the Kardashians for being frauds or they try to call out like Beyonce, like, oh, that's not her natural hair texture. She's wearing wigs. She's a fraud. Um, did you take away her pretty privilege? Is she no longer a billionaire now? Did she crumble up into a ball and just become ugly now because you called out that she uses beauty enhancements? No. So I, I have learned to no longer be afraid of other people's scrutiny because I've learned that number one, people are going to scrutinize me anyway. They're going to scrutinize me whether I look pretty or whether I look ugly. So which problems would I rather have? Would I rather have pretty girl problems or would I rather have ugly girl problems? Because people will talk shit. If you wear makeup, people will talk shit. But then if you don't wear makeup and you're showing all your acne or whatever, then people will still talk shit. So it's like, I might as well just do whatever the fuck I want. But I used to struggle with that insecurity of having my beauty enhancements make me feel like a fraud. So wearing high heels and dressing up, I remember when I first started doing that, I felt like a fraud, like, oh, I'm not rich. Like, why am I trying to dress like some rich girl? Why am I trying to dress like some classy girl? I don't have any money. I shouldn't be dressing like this. And deep down inside, it went back to me feeling like I didn't deserve to feel beautiful. Me feeling like I didn't deserve to have that much confidence to walk around in high heels and red lipstick and to be able to wear whatever hair extensions I want and just look like a princess or a pageant girl walking down the street. Deep down inside, I didn't feel like I deserved to have that level of confidence. So I noticed that the only people that talk shit about beauty enhancements tend to be the people who they feel the same thing. They don't feel like they deserve to have that much confidence while simultaneously having fake beauty or beauty enhancements. And also this whole thing about being a fraud, um, everybody's a fraud. Let's talk about how lots of people in the government are frauds. The people at your job are frauds. They lied to you and said, oh, you're going to be working at a great company. Oh, there's plenty of room for growth here. That was fraud. Your ex-boyfriend's a fraud. Your mom and dad are frauds. They tried to make themselves look like they were just gods and like they were perfect in your eyes. And then in reality, you find out about their past or you find out about their poverty. So it's like everybody has aspects of themselves that make them a fraud. So it's like, if somebody calls me a fraud because I'm wearing red lipstick or because I'm wearing color contacts, well, guess what? That makes two of us, bitch. But the way that I like to think of it is my beauty enhancements that I choose, um, why am I choosing them? So I think that once I was able to answer that question, then I was able to have more confidence. So for example, why do I like wearing synthetic wigs and, and extensions? I like wearing them because I think that the wigs and weaves look better than what my natural hair does. I think my natural hair is beautiful, but my natural hair, if I get out into the humidity, it's going to frizz up. Or if I sweat a lot and stuff like at the gym, it might frizz up or mess up. So what I like about synthetic weaves and wigs is that it stays in the perfect style. Like it never changes or anything. Um, You can cut it. You can do different colors of hair every day. That's another thing. I like the versatility that comes with wearing wigs and weaves. I can't dye my natural hair every day, but I can wear a different color wig every day. I also like that I get to express uh, my creativity based on the seasons or like the time of year. So for example, around fall, I like to do auburn hair colors or like lots of warm tone browns and caramel colors. So literally my actual body and the way that I paint my body like a canvas or the way that I decorate my body is reflective of how I feel inside. So if I feel like I'm in a bright blue mood and I just want to go to the ocean and go to the beach and look at the beautiful blue sky, and maybe I want to put on some blue contacts that day to match how I feel inside, then that is my right to do so. It's my body. These are my eyeballs. Why are you worried about what I put on my freaking eyeball, for God's sakes? It's literally just a bent piece of soft plastic that I'm putting on my eyeball, and you're over here trying to make me feel bad about myself. No, I'm going to use my beauty to reflect my mood. And so that's actually a form of self-love for me. So I know that for other women... Maybe they don't feel that way and maybe they uh, they don't want to wear makeup and stuff. And that's okay. Two things can be true at the same time. You can be beautiful with no makeup and no beauty enhancements whatsoever. And you can also be beautiful with every beauty enhancement in the world. So that's what I choose to believe about myself. I believe that I'm beautiful with absolutely nothing. But I also believe I'm beautiful with absolutely everything. So if I want to get some little Botox, if I want to get some lipo one day, or if I want to get a facelift, maybe I want to get some dentures when I get old, I am still going to feel just as beautiful in my dentures at 85 as I feel in my 30s with my real teeth. 
So I've noticed that a lot of people who try to make you feel like a fraud, they're mad because their confidence can only be so, it can only go so far. I've noticed that some people have confidence that is not flexible. So they're only confident when they are natural. They, their confidence does not extend to when they have on makeup. It doesn't extend to when they have on a wig. It doesn't extend to when they wear the color red or the, when they wear the color yellow. I used to have a color complex about wearing the color yellow. I used to not, actually all the way up until like this year, I did not wear the color yellow because I associated it with, you know, only lighter skinned people or people of a certain complexion wear that color. And oftentimes people wear yellow to show off how their skin tone has yellow in it. And so I internalized that insecurity that others projected onto me. So I was actually afraid of wearing the color yellow, for God's sakes, because I didn't want to come off like I'm just being cocky or I'm being conceited or I'm trying to make my skin tone look brighter and I'm trying to make myself stand out against everybody else. So I was internalizing other people's insecurities as opposed to saying, wait a minute, if I want to wear a certain color, I can wear whatever the fuck I want. So the way that I view it is that other people's rules for their own beauty do not have to be your rules. Like, for example, my mom, my parents, they've never had Botox or anything. I'm the first person in my family to get Botox. And everybody in my family, we all look young and stuff. I know they say black don't crack. And I don't have like wrinkles or anything like that. But I really wanted to try it. I wanted to see what it would look like. So when I got it, I remember people in my family, they were like, oh, you don't need that. Like, you're pretty just the way you are. And I know that I'm pretty the way I am, but I also think that I would be pretty with Botox. That's all it means. Me getting Botox doesn't mean I hate myself if I don't have Botox. No, just because you would hate yourself if you had Botox doesn't mean that I hate myself if I have Botox. So the same thing goes for contacts. For the girl in the Reddit who said like, wearing blue contacts, she likes how they look and they look beautiful on her, but she feels like she's being a fraud. Okay, that's other people's, it's most likely other people's opinions being projected onto you. Obviously, you you must not feel like that much of a fraud because you're wearing them and your family knows that you have brown eyes or whatever. And that's another thing that I've had to learn too is I have actually learned to guard my beauty. That's the best way that I can describe it. So I have learned how to set boundaries with other people if they try to talk shit. And let's say somebody uh, like the girl who mentioned the comment about my curls were like not as curly as the other curls on my head. I literally responded, this was at work, at my job as an accountant. I said, I'm just at work. I don't have to impress anyone. I don't have to prove anything to anyone and I don't give a fuck. Yes, I said fuck at my accounting job. So you don't have to say it like that, but that was one way of establishing a boundary and making it known, you're not gonna be able to make me feel insecure, baby. You're not gonna be able to make me feel all sad and like, oh my God, my hair, my curls aren't curly enough and oh my God, I don't, I don't look perfect enough. My hair doesn't look natural enough, no. And then I took it even further by wearing a different wig not not a weave like how I was wearing before. I was wearing like one of those partial extension hair pieces. Nope, I went full on wig where it's like full on lace from the beginning of my head all the way to the back. And I wore my hair like that every other week and I rocked it with confidence. And I told everybody in the office, my hair is a wig. Now you don't have to do all that. I was just being, that was just my way of um, embracing a new level of confidence within myself when it came to that particular beauty enhancement, like with wigs. But another thing is, most of the time, people are not going to ask you, why are you wearing a wig? Why are you wearing these contacts? Why are you wearing this? And if they do ask you those questions, you get to think within yourself, okay, is this person worthy of my answer? Because if a person in the grocery store asked me, why are you wearing extensions? I would just be like, because I like them. They look cute on me. And that's it. So that would be a simple answer. If it's somebody that you're dating, because I've noticed that sometimes people... Um, they have a male-centered beauty standard. So they think that because men like women who are natural that, you know, somehow he's not going to like her if she's not natural, which in my opinion, I kind of believe that most men kind of have no standards and will kind of like fuck anything. But the way that I dealt with this when it came to dating was um, like if a guy asked me on a date or he wants to be my boyfriend or something, or I can tell like he's going to ask me to be his girlfriend, I will straight up, I have asked guys to their face, how do you feel about wigs, weaves, contacts, extensions, makeup, you know, all of the beauty enhancements? How do you feel about those things? And the guy has always said, like, he, he's fine. He doesn't care about it. 
But if any of those guys would have said, I don't like them, then I would have immediately been like, oh, okay, I'm not your type then as far as dating. Like, I'm not your type because I like those things and I'm going to continue to wear them. So I don't want to like waste my time around people who don't like certain aspects of myself or they don't like how I express myself. The way that your, your beauty is, the way that you look, that's just your way of expressing yourself. So every single person has a different way of expressing themselves. If you like to express your beauty by painting your nails red, and somebody else doesn't like painting their nails. Like I've had people make comments about me wearing gel manicures. Like, oh, but that's a piece of plastic that you're putting on your nail. I can't put that on my nail. Oh, couldn't be me. Okay, well, bitch, you're not me. So I can put plastic on my nails if I want. If it's my way of expressing myself, and if that's my form of expressing the beauty of my nails, then I get to wear whatever color I want. I get to wear whatever color I feel looks good against my skin tone. So if you feel like blue contacts or purple contacts or whatever looks good against your skin tone, then you get to wear that if you want to. But I do believe that um, changing up your beauty and having a versatile beauty does take a certain level of confidence. And I've noticed a lot of people do get triggered by that level of confidence. The fact that you could wear blue contacts one day and then the next day your eyes are brown again. And then the next day your eyes are red. And then the next day your eyes are like green. It takes a lot of confidence to be able to walk around like that and not care about what people think. So in reality, I think that all of the comments that people get about their hair and about all of their beauty enhancements, it has to do with Number one, people just being jealous or being curious about how you are so confident to literally walk around with like 50 different hairstyles or like just looking like a totally different person and just rocking it. But what I've learned for myself is that it's actually so freeing to finally shed everybody else's expectations of me, to finally be able to wear a blue hair extension clip in or to be able to finally try that new eyebrow look or to try like... I don't know, one of the different eyeshadow looks to try like very sparkly eyeshadow or to try to wear six inch heels or wearing like that crop top or wearing that shirt that shows a little bit of cleavage or, you know, you're, you have a different eye color that day. Or maybe you do the makeup where it's like where they do the freckles and all that. Or maybe you like to draw on your eyes. I've seen girls draw little hearts on the outer corners of their eyes and stuff. So you get to express your beauty however you see fit. And if you think that a certain item looks gorgeous on you and you feel like, you know, it aligns with your goals, because I really feel like one of the main reasons people try to call you a fraud is because they understand sociology. They understand that this world will judge you based on how you look. So you trying to look a different way or you trying to look better and stuff, you're cheating. I feel like that's kind of the mindset. They feel like you cheated because you wore those hair extensions and now all the guys are asking you on dates. You know, now there are more guys swiping on you on the dating app because you're wearing hair extensions. And they're just mad because you achieved your goal. If your goal is, I want to get more swipes on a dating app or I want to rock blue eyes up against my tan skin tone and you know it fits my mood and I just feel like I look like a walking snapchat filter today and that's how I want to look and it looks so cute on me and I feel like such a baddie I love that I can totally morph myself to look like a totally different person if I want to that's a very powerful thing that really is like being able to completely change your whole look to where you look unrecognizable that's very powerful so yes, you do have the opportunity to navigate in so many different spaces. And I think that's why a lot of people, they get triggered with like mixed race women, or they get triggered if like, let's say you do look good. Maybe, maybe when you wear colored contacts, it really does look like that's your actual eye color. Or maybe you get the expensive colored contacts where it is created to look natural. So it's not like the cosplay contacts. It's more like the ones that really does look like a person that was born with that eye color. But that's why I try to talk about this topic on this channel a lot because I've noticed that beauty is a form of social power. So you get to decide what you want to do with your beauty. You get to decide if you want to use your social power. You get to decide how do I want to use my beauty. So for example, um, I like to use my beauty to express my inner moods. I know that that's a very artsy way to look at it, but I know that not every woman is like that. Some women like to use their beauty to express the environment they're in. So for example, if you're going to a bar, they like to wear a halter top with some high heels. If they're going to a work setting, they like to dress extremely professional, like in, in a blazer and stuff, because they want their beauty to be representative of their environment. 
Other people like to use their beauty to gain positive attention. So maybe in the dating market or something, maybe you want to wear a dress that really complements your figure or, or maybe you want to like uh, try out for some modeling thing or something and you want to wear something that shows your shape. Or I've noticed that um, other women, they use their beauty as a form of celebration. They like to celebrate themselves with their beauty. So if they were born with 4C hair, maybe they will grow their hair into freeform locks because that is their way of celebrating their heritage. That's their way of celebrating their African ancestry. Same thing goes for like mixed women. Let's say you are part white and you want to dye your hair with some blonde highlights or something. Maybe your mom or grandma has naturally blonde highlights and you are celebrating your mom and your grandma. You're celebrating that side of your heritage and that's part of the way that you are celebrating yourself. So as far as how and why people have the beauty that they do, that is their personal business and that is something that nobody will really ever know unless they personally ask them. So for example, my theory is that with a lot of celebrities, their beauty is kind of based on the environment that they're in. So if I don't have perfectly white teeth, but I'm an actress and all of the roles are going to the girls with the perfectly white teeth, or I feel like my teeth will make me stand out or will make me fit in more, um, then maybe I'm gonna do that. So I've noticed different women will use their social power, AKA their beauty in different ways. Some women use their beauty to fit in. Some women use their beauty to stand out. Like for me, I tend to fall more on the using it to stand out. So I am the type of person where yes, I will wear five different wigs, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just if I feel like it. If I feel like standing out and drawing extra attention to the fact that I am wearing those different hairstyles and that's just me doing a big middle finger to anybody who looks down on or who doesn't want me to express my beauty in a certain way. No, that's me putting the middle finger up to you in my own mind because I'm basically making it known that I don't have to look how you expect me to look. Just because you expected me to come in here with the same curly black hair as yesterday doesn't mean I'm coming in here with the same curly black hair. It's my body. So I love to use my beauty as a way to stand out. So the way that you can look at it with yourself is how do I like to use my beauty? Do I like to use my beauty to express my culture? Do I like to use my beauty to experiment? Because that's another reason why a girl might wear like contacts or something. Maybe she wants to use her beauty to experiment. So I don't have a problem with any sort of beauty enhancements at all. What I do have a problem with is when people purposely shame the women who were born that way. So that's why on some of my previous videos, you will see me talking shit because I don't like how people, they try to come for mixed race women, but then they will simultaneously try to look like those same mixed women. So that's the only thing I have a problem with is the hypocrisy. But someone simply wanting to change up their look or if they think something looks really pretty or if they think they would look prettier with a certain look or a certain hair color, then that is their business, is their body and they have the right to do it. You know how people say you're not ugly, you're just broke? Um, I also believe that you're not ugly, you're just not courageous. So for a lot of people, they are just not courageous enough to put on the red lipstick. They don't have the courage to curl their hair. They don't have the courage to dye their hair a different color. And so they're mad at the women who do. They don't have the courage to put on those blue contacts when their eyes were just brown yesterday. They don't have the courage to uh, to deal with the, with the criticism. They don't have the courage to deal with people calling out that they're wearing ex extensions or calling out that they have a relaxer. They don't have the courage to even be seen on that level. I've noticed that a lot of people who call out your beauty enhancements, those people have a fear of being seen. That's it. They have the fear of being seen and they have the fear of being disliked. And so they're trying to project that onto you by noticing and seeing your beauty enhancements and then disliking it or like calling it out. No, it's like just because you have a fear of being seen, just because you have a fear of getting too much attention or you have a fear of standing out, just because you have placed your own beauty limits upon yourself doesn't mean that I have to place those same limits on me. So damn right, I may come in here looking like a totally different woman tomorrow and I'm gonna walk around with confidence and I'm going to rock my new hairstyle or whatever beauty enhancement I have chosen to receive. And if anyone has any questions, yes, feel free to ask me but understand that I am not required to give you answers or I can give you the bitchiest answer I want. For example, let's say I'm wearing some colored contacts and somebody says, why are you wearing colored contacts? Why do you care? That's how I would respond, why do you care? Why do you care what I put on my eye? 
If I put something on my eye that I think looks cute on me, then I'm going to continue to wear it. But what I've noticed though is that generally speaking, most people really don't care. Most people are not over here just like staring at people and I mean, if they are staring at you, like I said, usually it could be a look of admiration or a look of jealousy or whatever. But normally if I see a girl who has nice extensions or nice contacts, I'm just gonna be thinking to myself, oh, that looks so cute. Maybe I'll try those contacts. Maybe I'll try that. Um, that corset that she has on you know how they have those corsets that like suck in your stomach and stuff I've seen girls wearing those too So it's like oh, maybe I'll try that or you know Maybe I'll switch up my look and kind of enhance that part of my body the reason that I wear uh, Beauty enhancements the reason that I change up my look is because I like how I look and I like how I feel When I am wearing those things so if you like how you look when you wear uh, extensions or if you like how you feel when you have a tan or when your skin's as bright as possible or when you have no makeup on then you have the right to do whatever makes you feel good and whatever makes you feel like you look good and also for me honestly I do like to keep up with the beauty enhancements because I really do feel like beauty enhancements give me more options for how I can look like for for the potential of what I could look like so now I feel like if I look at another girl and she has a totally different hair color, different eye color or whatever, in my mind, I, I don't think that it's unattainable. I know that every type of beauty is technically attainable for me. It just might take more work or it might take me switching my hair color. So you get to decide like how much, how much effort do I want to put into having that particular look? Do I want to try that out? Do I want to just test out? A new hair color and see how you know see how I navigate through society do I want to see like what type of male attention do I get with blonde hair versus black hair versus showing off my boobs versus not versus with baggy clothes so you get to decide how you want to live your life you get to decide how you want to navigate your social power aka your beauty so the way that I see beauty enhancements contacts eyelashes fake nails whatever those are all like little tiny plastic forms of social power. So if utilized correctly, those eyelashes can take you from, I just rolled out of bed to, I look like I'm going to the coffee shop and I look effortless. So that's the way that I view beauty enhancements. I view them as a tool and I view them as a potential tool that I can use for whatever purposes I have. So if my purpose is to look more glamorous or to look like my eyelashes are longer, then I can wear those lashes. And also, as far as the whole uh, feeling like a fraud with your beauty, nobody can make you feel like a fraud if you are upfront about it. Like if you say, oh, thank you, yes, I just bought my new boobies. You know, like let's say you get a boob job and you're like, yes, thank you, I just bought these last week, I'm very excited about them. Then you're not a fraud because you are telling everybody upfront like this is what it is. And I feel like the only reason that people um, get mad about you doing things that make you look better is because insecure people feel like they look worse in comparison. So let's say you are fat and your friend is fat, but then you go and get lipo. Well, your fat friend is now going to feel like she looks worse in comparison to you. So yes, of course she's going to shame you for getting lipo because she feels like you're outshining her. So I've noticed that a lot of times... When people try to um, diminish your beauty or they try to make you feel like a fraud because of your beauty, they're just mad because your beauty, aka your social power, is working better than theirs. They're mad because you are gaining more beauty points than them and they feel like it's not fair because you bought those lips, you bought those eyelashes, or you bought those um, colored contacts and that's the only reason you're getting attention. But even if it is, if your goal was simply to get attention, then you achieved your goal. If your goal was to experiment, then you still achieved your goal. If your goal was to see how blue looks up against your skin tone or to test out this different look, because some people, um, if they want to get a certain surgery or, or like they want to, maybe they want to get lipo, maybe they want a nose job or something, they will try, like, let me try to contour my nose to see how that looks. Let me try to Photoshop an image to see how my nose would look with a different angle. Let me try these contacts because I know they have surgeries and stuff where they like can change your eye color. So some people might be like, okay, before I get a surgery, maybe I would be satisfied if I just had contacts as opposed to, you know, going full on with the surgery because contacts, you can take those out if you get tired of them and you can switch those out every single day versus a surgery where it's like that is your permanent eye color. But when it comes to something that enhances your beauty, 
Um, I know that for me personally, my goal is not always to look natural. My goal is to just look good. So if I'm wearing gel nails, yeah, it doesn't look natural. It technically does look like plastic on your nail, but it looks good though. Red lipstick doesn't look natural. I didn't come out of the womb with perfectly red lips, but it looks good. So you have to ask yourself, like, what are my goals? Is my goal to look, would I rather look natural or would I rather look as good as possible or as glamorous as possible? Or would I rather have as much versatility as possible? Would I choose self-expression through my beauty? Like, do I want to be able to express my beauty in whatever ways I want? But yeah, anyone who matters to you in life, they wouldn't care about your hair color, your eye color. Anybody that genuinely loves you for who you are on the inside, they are not going to judge you negatively or, you know, completely want to cut you off because you wore some hair extensions. And if they did, then you don't want them in your life in the first place. And I've also noticed that when it comes to beauty enhancements of any kind, or just beauty in general, there are so many double standards. So it's like, okay, I can wear makeup, but I can't wear that much makeup. I can wear um, hair extensions, but I can't wear contacts. Okay, so I can contour my nose, but I can't get the surgery so that I don't have to contour my nose. So people have so many double standards anyway. So it's up to me to decide, okay, do I want to just spend the rest of my life jumping through all these hoops, trying to prove to strangers that I am confident, or do I want to actually feel confident? Okay, I'm going to do whatever makes me feel the most confident. And then I'm going to ask myself, why does that make me feel confident? So I know that for me, what cured the cognitive dissonance was really being able to answer that question. Why does it make me feel confident? Like for me, I like to wear contacts sometimes. So it's like, why do my contacts make me feel confident? And for me, it's because I get to change up my entire look. I get to look like a totally different person. I like the fact that I can look unrecognizable. I like the fact that something like contacts can make me like go incognito to where you kind of do a double take and it's like, oh wait, is that her? I also like the fact that I get to um, walk around and have the courage. Like I just feel like a badass about the fact that I have the courage to drastically change my look up that much and to not care what anybody else thinks. That is why I feel confident if I were to wear like my cosplay contacts and stuff, like that's why I can wear like the purple eyes and stuff because, you know, obviously that looks fake having purple eyes or having very vibrant, you know, cartoonish looking eyes. But I've tried other ones before too. So the way that I saw it was, um, it also makes me feel confident about what colors I feel look best with my features. So for example, um, I used to do like influencing and modeling and all that crap when I was younger. And one of the things that I got was I got gifted a set of contacts. So they were colored and stuff. So they had like the cosplay ones, they had different colors. And I liked the fact that I got to try out these different eye colors so that I could determine, okay, do I prefer lighter eyes? Do I prefer darker eyes? Um, what eye color do I feel looks good on me? Do I really feel like dark brown is the best eye color that goes with my features and, and skin tone and all that? Or do I feel like maybe a medium brown, maybe a chocolate brown goes best, or maybe like a green or something. So that is a part of what made me feel confident about that particular beauty enhancement. And I also realized that really no one cares. Like seriously, anybody who's my loved one, like my family members and stuff, like when I wore my cosplay contacts and I went home for the holidays, uh, my mom and grandma and stuff, they were like, oh, your eyes look like a filter or something. It looks like one of those Snapchat filters because I was wearing the, you know, the very dramatic um, cosplay circle lenses. So in my opinion, it was like fun. I didn't have any experiences where I felt like I was being a fraud or anything, but that's also because I was very open about it. I didn't try to, well, they already know what I look like, first of all, but also I don't try to pass it off as this is how I naturally look. So anybody that is close to me, like a boyfriend or something like that, I would tell him, oh, you know, I wear contacts sometimes or I wear different hair colors sometimes. So just so you know, I'm going to switch it up a lot. So I hope you're okay with that. But even if it doesn't look natural, like color contacts or I don't know, wigs or um, acrylic nails, red lipstick does not look natural. Even if those things don't look natural, if it makes you feel glamorous and you feel beautiful and confident, and also if you love the freedom, like I know that for me, I love the newfound sense of freedom that I have when it comes to beauty enhancements. It actually makes me more excited now about my femininity versus when I was very religious and I always had to ask the question like, okay, 
can I wear this or is this too much or like so I don't have that uncertainty anymore now I get to get excited about different types of makeup or different types of extensions and stuff and I don't feel any restrictions on my beauty whatsoever so it really brought me back to life it brought my femininity back to life in a greater way and I feel like I'm able to express myself more when it comes to different beauty enhancements and it really does increase my confidence because I know that for me, I like to look back at my pictures and I'm like, wow, I look good with black hair, I look good with blonde hair, I look good with red hair. I like being able to say that about myself. So even if other people think she doesn't look that good with this hair color or, you know, those contacts look fake, if I feel like I look cute and if I like the fact that I had the confidence to even switch up my look that drastically, that really does help me to build my self-esteem and it does help me to accept my beauty. And by the way, I'm not I'm not bragging or anything about beauty. I'm not trying to say like, oh my God, I'm just so pretty. No, I have things that I'm working on about myself. I have different insecurities and stuff and like things that I uh, want to improve about myself. So it's not like, oh my God, I just think I look so perfect in everything. No, it's that I like to embrace myself and experiment despite the fact that I don't look perfect. I guess that's the way that I view it. But what do you ladies think? Have you ever felt like a fraud? because of your own beauty? Have you ever felt like a fraud because of makeup or hair extensions or getting highlights? Maybe you got a boob job, maybe you got some liposuction or you got your teeth done. Maybe you uh, went and got some Invisalign, some braces, some veneers, some Botox, some fillers. Did you feel like a fraud? And did other people make you feel like a fraud? Because I've noticed that most of the people who make you feel like a fraud are secretly trying to copy you. And that's why they're mad when they find out, oh wait, those are contacts? Oh wait, those are, that's plastic surgery? Dang it, I'm not courageous enough to try that. Dang it, I can't afford to do that. So now I'm mad. But what do you ladies think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.